Thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring this episode. ButcherBox partners with farmers who are committed to treating animals humanely and use sustainable farming methods to deliver high quality meat directly to your door. They offer 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage breed pork, and wild-caught seafood. You choose your box type and delivery frequency, and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. Your order comes in an eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. New members will get up to 10 pounds of free meat in their first box. Go to the link in the description to sign up today. Ladies and gentlemen, today Sola El Whaley is putting a spin on lasagna. It's time to stump Sola. So, I have to make lasagna into ice cream. When I think of lasagna, I think of wavy, long pasta noodles, you know, with like the ruffle on the edge, some kind of tomato-y thing, ricotta-y thing, and like broiled cheese on top. So those are the flavors I'm gonna focus on. Lasagna. No, I'm bad at spelling, so I have to say it like that to myself, and I still mess, mess, mess it up. First thing is the nudes. Pasta is just, sometimes it's just water or semolina and egg yolks. So because my ice cream base is already gonna have a lot of egg yolks, I think I'm just gonna add semolina to it instead of adding toasted pasta. So it's like we're building the pasta in our base. Yeah, so it's gonna be like a semolina pudding almost that we're gonna churn. That's good, so far that's tasty. We're in tasty town. For the ricotta, I wanna do different textures of ice cream so that when we go to eat it, it's not just like one thing. So I'm gonna do a ricotta semifredo. A semifredo is, is an ice cream that's not spun. So it's usually like a moussey situation, whipped eggs, whipped cream, folded together, and then you just freeze it. So because you're adding the air into it before freezing it, you don't have to churn it for my sauce. I'm gonna go for sorbet. I have not made marinara sorbet before. Oh. Important, okay, so let's talk about ice cream for a second. I, I forgot, I need to give you some base knowledge. So the sugar in ice cream is really important because it prevents crystallization and it helps you get a really nice smooth texture. But I don't want this to lean too sweet. I want it to go more savory because we're going lasagna. So I'm gonna be using a lot of glucose powder. Glucose powder is a sugar that's a little bit less sweet than table sugar, but it does all the same things that table sugar does. So. That's what I'm gonna be putting into my ice creams. Other really important part of a lasagna is the broiled cheese on top. I'm not gonna build this beautiful ice cream lasagna and broil it and just watch it all melt in front of me. Instead, I'm gonna grate some cheese onto a sheet tray, bake it until it's golden brown and crispy, and then steep that into my ice cream base. And hopefully it has like a lot of that toasty cheese flavor. I wanna freeze it really, really hard so that I can grate it on top so it kind of looks like the cheese finish that you see on lasagna. I think this is gonna be interesting. I'm excited to be making four totally different kinds of ice creams. So I think we're gonna have a lot of variety in texture, variety in flavor, and I hope that it kind of reminds you of lasagna and isn't disgusting. So I'm gonna start with my broiled cheese ice cream. So I'm gonna use equal parts parm and pecorino. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Grate it coarsely in the Vita Prep and then lay it out on a rimmed baking sheet. We're gonna bake it at 375 until it looks like toasty and golden. Now I'm gonna make a sorbet syrup. This is gonna be the base for our sorbet. If you make a bunch of sorbet syrup, then you can kind of just blend in any fruit or vegetable, or in this case, marinara, and it'll spin into sorbet. We're gonna do a combo of dextrose and sugar. Now I'm gonna bring my pot of water to the boil. I don't know if this one's gonna be good. This might be weird, but I mean, the whole thing's gonna be weird. It's lasagna. We're just watching a pot of water boil. Oh, Isn't that thrilling that. content? Yes. Look at that steam. Should we go over the stages of water heating up? Steam. We're starting to see small, the technical word is not boublage, it's perliage. But uh, I think boublage is better. Look at those little bubbles, wow. It's getting warmer. We're really getting close. This is thrilling. This is thrilling content. Okay, look, it boiled and we watched it. Everything you heard is a lie. So we're gonna sprinkle and whisk. We just are looking to dissolve. If it isn't the syrup, once it cools, it can begin to crystallize and then you're gonna have a grainy texture in your sorbet. We just want it to come right back up to a boil and that's how we know it's gonna be dissolved. We have dissolved. Applause. Okay, now this is gonna cool completely and then we're gonna use it to make our sorbet. We're using Rayo's homemade, only the best. 
Uh, combining it with some of that sorbet syrup. Seasoning it up with a little salt, malic acid. Should we do a little red pep? I don't know, we'll taste it, we'll see. All right, so I'm doing 550 grams of marinara. This is my sorbet syrup that's fully cooled, and I'm gonna add 550 grams, no more, no less. I was supposed to add 500 grams and I added 550. You know what? You know what? We'll, we'll just see what happens, you know? I'm gonna whisk it up and season it up. Red pepper flakes, please. Thank you, Kendall. <laughs> Oregano, please. Thank you, Kendall. We're ready to go. Seasoning it up. A little chili pep, oregano. We definitely need salt. And then, let's see, maybe, maybe I need to put a little bit more sauce to make up for... What is the point of these very precise measurements? People made sorbet before scales existed. It'll be fine. I'm gonna add a little malic acid just to brighten it up a little. Say when. <laughs> Meanwhile, ooh, toasty, cheesy. That does smell really good. Okay. More black pepper. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's spin this baby. Here is my marinara sorbet base going in and uh, we'll see how this turns out hmm? done <laughs> so this is the pecorino and parm that I grated and cooked in the oven until it got nice and toasty and I'm gonna break this up and put it into my milk and cream mixture I'm gonna have a little cheese snack for myself all right I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer turn it off let it hang out cool down hopefully it'll get nice and cheesy while this happens and this happens, I'm gonna toast my semolina flour. So semolina, it is, it's a wheat, it's a wheat, right? That's often used to make pasta. I'm just gonna spread it out onto a sheet tray and let it toast. I'm gonna go in there and toss it a few times. I want this to get like lightly golden. Boom. Okay, I have a little bubbly. I'm gonna turn this off, let it cool down completely, and then we'll see what it's become. Now I'm gonna work on my ricotta semifredo. So we're gonna start by separating our eggs. Ha! Huh. Oh. I needed a few more eggs. Thank you, Kendall. <laughs> now, before I get in there and start separating, I like to wash my hands because the outside of the eggshell is usually where all the bacteria is. It's coming out of a chicken's butt. So wash your hands after you touch eggshells. All right, so we need 250 grams of egg whites and then 125 grams of sugar. We want this to be slightly less sweet because it's lasagna. I'm gonna do 75 grams of glucose. Get in there, whisk it really well, and then we're gonna cook this over a water bath. So in the pot, there's about an inch of water. We don't need a lot because what happened to my hand? What is that? What is that? Where did that even come from? All right, yeah, so we only need an inch because we need steam. When you cook the eggs a little bit, we're gonna denature the proteins, so it's gonna whip up even more voluminous and be a lot more stable. Okay, so I let this get nice and warm. I just like dip my finger and see if it's nice and steamy. If you really care about pasteurization, get an instant read thermometer, make sure that the mixture has reached 165, and then you're free to serve this to the elderly, young children, and immunocompromised. Okay, now we're gonna equip it. All right, check it out. Whipped, whipped. I can do the thing where I flip it over my head. Oh okay, God, that would've been, okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the yolks. So as you can see, our yolks are nice and creamy, thick. They have like doubled in volume, but they don't gain the kind of volume whites do. So we're gonna whip some cream. I'm gonna do it right in the same bowl. No need to clean it out. That's why I like to do it in that order. I like to whip the whites first because you don't wanna get any fat in there. And then I go ahead and put all the fat in there my heart desires. Okay. Our cream is perfectly whipped. Now we need our ricotta because this is a ricotta semifredo. And I'm gonna add a little olive oil because, you know, Italian food. Now we're gonna fold everything together. 
When you fold stuff like this together, you want to start with your heaviest thing and then fold in your light thing. So I'm going to mix my ricotta with the olive oil and then we're going to fold in the yolks. Then we're going to fold in our cream. Gentle, gentle full. Okay, now the light stuff with our meringue. Okay, it's super light, so it's going to freeze and stay creamy instead of being like a hard block. I guess we should taste it. Mmm. I taste the olive oil a lot more than I thought it would, and I like it. I think the olive oil was the best choice we made here. And the oregano is just like a subtle thing, like hint of oregano. I'm gonna freeze this, and this is my ricotta semi fredo. So this is the marinara sorbet. Huh? It really smells like marinara. I think it looks like marinara. Let's give it a taste. It's just super weird. Because it tastes like pizza sauce, but it's dessert. I wouldn't do this again. <laughs> this is the milk and cream that has had the toasted cheese steeping in it. Huh, interesting. It just kind of like turned into like sour cream, like the whole thing like set. Look at that. Ooh, it smells cheesy. Whoa, that's good, I like that. I'm gonna just blend the whole thing together and spin that. Okay, so we're gonna blend this up. I just hope it doesn't turn into butter. I am going to strain it right into the ice cream machine. Nothing's coming out. <laughs> just needs a little encouragement, you know? Sometimes, we all do sometimes, right? All right, spin. So, since this is just like milk and cream, there's no sugar, there's no yolks, it, it's gonna really easily overspin, and there's not very much in there, so I'm gonna just watch this. I'm gonna just stare at this, stare at this. And I believe we have ice cream, so I'm going to freeze this in a container. I want it to be kind of flat. I'm hoping it's hard enough to grate. Cool. It's very cheesy. Really, 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 really cheesy. Okay, freezer. Now the most important part of the lasagna are the noodles. So I'm gonna start making my lasagna noodle ice cream. We're gonna start milk and cream, sugar glucose, and whisk in that toasted semolina. And I'm gonna cook it until it's like a thick porridge. It smells good. It smells weedy. It smells semolina-y. All right, let's temper in our eggs. We're gonna add a couple ladles of this to our eggs and just get it nice and warm, and then we're gonna put our yolks right into the semolina custard thing that we have happening. And we're gonna cook it until it's just like nice and steamy and we know that those yolks have cooked. Okay, I think we did it. Whoa, it's really good. It's really, really tasty, as it is. Like, I just wanna have a bowl of it, so I think whatever this turns into, it's gonna be good. Now, before we spin it, we need to chill it down. So, Kendall, ice bath. <laughs> I also have another bowl. Thank you, thank you, Kendall. Enthusiasm, you know? Okay, we chill. You always want your ice cream to cool down as quickly as possible. So if it starts out cold, it'll chill faster. It'll have a better texture. I think, I think we are chill. I don't know how this is going to spin because it's pretty thick. So we'll see what happens. Our ice cream is spun. Okay, I'm going to have to move really quickly because it's going to want to melt immediately. I want to spread it into sheets. My goal is I want to lay these dowels down so that they kind of have a little fluted edge. Like a real lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> it's not doing what I want it to do. Perhaps I must abandon these. It's gonna have to be flat. Sorry guys. On the plus side, this ice cream is delicious. Seasoning is really good. It's not too sweet, but it's not like too savory. Like I would eat a bowl of this. I'm gonna put this in the freezer so it firms up and then we can stack up our lasagna. All right. So our ice creams have been chilling. They're nice and firm. And now I'm going to try and build my lasagna. So these are my pasta ice cream sheets. Let's see how they do. I'm hoping they easily release from the tray, right? And then we can peel off that sheet. Yes, this is, this is working. Now let's see how this is doing. Ooh, it's not bad. This is a nice texture. Okay, I'm gonna do pasta sheet. Smoosh on the tomatoes. Why didn't I put everything in sheets, right? That would have made sense. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer. Let's smoosh a couple more layers. This is not something I think anyone will make. You need to go back in the freezer. And then our ricotta semi-fredo. I was gonna pipe it, but it's 
a really nice texture, so I think I'm gonna just do these like scoops all the way across. It will become lasagna, it will. Maybe I shouldn't have sauced first. Okay, can we pop this in the freezer for a sec? So should I pre-scoop them? Yeah, why don't we, yeah. Everything is melting. We're gonna put on the final layers. This is my moment, my eight mile moment in one shot. Not really, I have enough to make another lasagna if this doesn't work. Okay, I don't know if it's lasagna. <laughs> And then our cheese ice cream, I'm gonna scrape it up so it's gonna be hopefully look like grated parm. It really looks like parmesan. This, yeah. this, is, a, this is a great food illusion. Hola, look at you. What? You did it. <laughs> Something. This is my lasagna ice cream. It smells very cheesy and very, very marinara -y. Like I'm getting big waves of marinara and parm, so it's gonna be interesting eating this. <laughs> Are you ready? Am I ready for lasagna ice cream? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Readier than I've ever been. Yeah, you are. Okay. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm in big trouble. Oh my God. <laughs> this is, it's beautiful. <laughs> it that is gorgeous. Does it look lasagna-esque? Uh, this is gorgeous. I would have guessed that it was Dessert. Would you eat this for a dinner? Would you eat this as a main meal? I wouldn't eat this for anything. <laughs> Smell it. Well, let's dig in. Give it a whiff. Ooh, it smells cheesy. Mm -hmm. it smells very cheesy. Uh, maybe the plate was a little small. <laughs> That's a pretty good cross yeah, section. This is a great cross section. Let's show the people. Beautiful layers, cuts clean. That was a very large piece of this. I'm gonna eat every single bite. Is it gonna be in the Clean Plate Club? I hope you don't have plans for the rest of the day. What does that mean? Well, you're lactose intolerant. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I blow? I just blew on it. <laughs> That's how much you fooled me. Oh, oh my sensitive teeth. It tastes so much like lasagna. It does, it tastes like, I, all I was thinking was I'm eating frozen lasagna it, that I haven't yeah, microwaved yet. It's like, you know, Stouffer's. And you can't chew it. Like my instinct is to chew these flavors. It's not bad, it's just really confusing. Oh. This is the marinara sorbet. Okay. We have mm -hmm. different kinds of ice cream. Sorbet, okay. Marinara sorbetti. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing that's killing the experience for me because it, it's very confusing. It's to, cold, frozen, soft tomato sauce mm -hmm. with a distinct, like you said, Chef Boyardee kind of vibe mm -hmm. to it. It's like you're just, it's like you're eating a frozen can of Chef Boyardee. But with excellent texture. But with excellent texture. <laughs> I think that's delightful. Yeah, that's good. There's a little olive oil in there. I'm getting some texture in there. You made it with ricotta, so it's mm -hmm. got little curds in there. Yeah. Is there basil in there? Oregano. Oregano. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Very close. I think that, that that's good. Yeah. You know, I would eat this as like a palate cleanser. Yeah. Between like A fancy Italian courses. restaurant mm -hmm. would give you this much of it. All right, so this is the one I'm really curious and excited and, and, and have childlike awe about. It tastes pasta-like. Did you put pasta in there? Did you grind up pasta? It's just, it's like a semolina pudding oh. with some egg yolks, then we spun it. That's very smart. And I think this is actually really delicious. Yeah, this is really good. <laughs> Parmesan pecorino powder ice cream. You know, I, I, with the exception of the tomato, I really like all of these elements separately. This is very interesting on its own. Mm -hmm. These are genuinely good on their own. And the, the tomato is, is little, terrible. This is a little confusing. But like, it wouldn't taste like lasagna without it. Yeah, no, exactly. You can't do it. I like the cheese ice cream. I like it too. I, I would think eat this, this on a fancy cheese plate. On a hot summer's day? My God. With a nice warm poached pear. Mm. I I hate this sorbet so much. Yeah, sorbet is awful. Sorbet is awful. The semi fredo is great. Granita is great. I think my favorite is the um, is the is the semolina. 
The semolina is my favorite too. I'm legitimately gonna make this. You really should. It's this is it's delightful. It's downright pleasant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, you have decidedly, I would say, not been stumped. Because this is lasagna ice cream to the bone. <laughs> this tastes exactly like lasagna in ice cream form. Aren't you glad I didn't put bolognese in there? I'm thrilled you didn't put <laughs> bolognese in there. <laughs> ah, first meat. Ah, mm -hmm. ah, ah. These are your lasagna sheets. All right. It's going to be better now that it's a little tempered. Mm. <laughs> Guys, make this semolina ice cream. We learned one thing. We had to do a lot of weird things to learn one useful thing. As that's how that's how life be sometimes. <laughs> yeah. If you want to find us, you know where we'll be. Mm -hmm. Sitting here eating this pre-frozen sheet of lasagna pasta um, ice cream pudding. Semolina. Stump solo. Thanks again to ButcherBox for sponsoring this episode. With ButcherBox, you can get regular deliveries of high quality beef, chicken, pork, and seafood on the schedule that you want. I love to use ButcherBox to get free range organic chicken, perfect for frying on a Sunday night. If you're concerned about packaging, don't worry because your order will arrive in an eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. New members will get a whole pork butt, ground beef, and bone-in chicken thighs free in their first box. That's up to 10 pounds of meat. Sign up at the link in the description.